You might remember him for his Saturday Night Live characters, including the unfrozen caveman lawyer, performances and hilarious skits and parody commercials, and impressions of celebrities including Bill Clinton and Frank Sinatra. Phil Hartman made himself a comedy legend for his adaptability and versatility. His talents landed him many jobs in films, television, commercials, and animation. Performing in iconic cartoons and animated films, from the Jetsons and Tiny Toon Adventures to the Brave Little Toaster and Kiki's Delivery Service. It was not just his career that made Hartman stand out, but also his tragic murder that shocked the entertainment world at the hands of his own wife. What caused this 10-year Hollywood marriage of one of the greatest names in comedy and voice acting to end in a murder-suicide? Born on September 24, 1948 in Brantford, Ontario, Canada, as the fourth of eight children, Phil loved doing impressions. At age 10, he and his family moved to the United States. He enjoyed making his classmates laugh as the class clown during his school days. He found work touring as a groupie and as a graphic designer, designing several famous album covers. In 1997, he joined the comedy troupe The Groundlings after attending one of their shows. He was able to find additional work in film, animation, and television. During his time in the troupe, he befriended John Lovitz, a fellow SNL cast member who became Phil's closest friend, and Paul Rubens. Phil helped develop Rubens' character, Pee Wee Herman, and the shows, The Pee Wee Herman Show and Pee Wee's Playhouse, where Phil portrayed the character of Captain Carl. Rubens brought Phil and some of his writers with him to New York City to host an episode of the legendary variety show, Saturday Night Live. Creator Lauren Michaels was impressed with Phil's talent. Phil joined Saturday Night Live in 1986 as a writer and cast member for eight years. He performed alongside famous cast members, including Mike Myers, Dana Carvey, Chris Rock, Adam Sandler, David Spade, Julia Sweeney, Chris Farley, and many more. Nicknamed The Glue because he held the show together, was always there to aid his fellow castmates, and helped the show regain its popularity after almost getting canceled, earning him and the writing team an Emmy Award. His famous impression of former U.S. President Bill Clinton was so popular, it appeared in various late-night shows and other programs. Opportunities continued to grow beyond SNL, including on The Simpsons, where he voiced many characters. His most iconic characters were the sleazy lawyer Lionel Hutz and B-movie actor Troy McClure. He would later star in the NBC series News Radio as Bill the Real Deal McNeil. This performance earned him an Emmy nomination that he would sadly never live to see. This true crime story truly begins the same year Phil joined SNL, when he met his third wife, a former model and aspiring actress named Bryn Omdahl, real name Vicky Jo Omdahl. Throughout their marriage, Bryn had anger issues and often argued with Phil. They even had fights while he was working. Despite Phil's attempts to help his wife find work, including her auditioning to be on SNL, Bryn lacked the skills and comedic talent needed to land the jobs. She only landed small bit roles in cameos, including as an extra on SNL's opening credits, as the woman sitting right across from Phil at a restaurant. During filming of that scene, Bryn kept constantly looking at the camera instead of Phil, causing her earrings to swing wildly in the final shot. Phil and his wife often put up the facade of a Hollywood family in public but in private, he was withdrawn and distant. After a night of drinks with friends on the evening of May 27, 1998, Bryn returned home and had a heated argument with Phil before he went to bed. While he slept, Bryn fatally shot him three times with a revolver sometime before 3 a.m. She later drove to the home of her friend, Ron Douglas, where she confessed, I killed Phil and I don't know why. She led Douglas back to her house, where she showed Phil lying dead in his bed. Police were called and were able to get the two children safely out of the house and tried to get Bryn to surrender peacefully. Unfortunately, she locked the door to her bedroom and turned the gun onto herself. Many questions still remain about Bryn's motive that night. 
Friends and loved ones believe that her jealousy of Phil's fame and success, her anger at him for not fulfilling her personal needs and furthering her own acting career reached its boiling point. In addition, her relapse on drugs have impaired her mental state. Autopsies showed that she had a blood alcohol level of 0.111 and had cocaine and Zoloft in her system. John Lovitz was devastated and was one of several people who tried to blame the murder on Phil's news radio co-star, Andy Dick, for dealing the cocaine that caused Bryn to relapse. Bryn's sister took in her and Phil's children to raise them privately away from the public. Many changes were done on the shows Phil appeared on, and several projects were canceled. Bill McNeil on news radio was killed off. His characters on The Simpsons were discontinued. His final episode, Bart the Mother, was dedicated in his memory. The role of Zap Brannigan, written specifically for Phil to voice on Matt Groening's next series, Futurama, was given to his friend and fellow voice actor, Billy West, who already voiced multiple characters on the show. West was at home with his wife when she answered the phone call and froze in shock. When he asked her what was wrong, she replied, Phil was murdered. After inheriting the role of Zap Brannigan, it's hard to imagine how difficult it was for West to deal with on both a professional and personal level. The main character of Futurama was also named after Phil as a tribute. His final three roles released posthumously were as Phil Thimple in Small Soldiers, the voice of Chauncey in Buster and Chauncey's Silent Night, and Gigi the Talking Cat in the English dub of Hayao Miyazaki's Kiki's Delivery Service. As a fan of The Simpsons, I admire the versatility of the show's voice actors, able to change their voice to convey many different characters. At the age of 16, when I learned the story of what happened to him, it makes people wonder how Hollywood couples maintain respect for each other if one is having more success than the other. Phil's ashes were scattered at Emerald Bay on Catalina Island, one of his favorite places to visit. His legacy was honored on both the Hollywood and Canada's Walk of Fame. Phil was nicknamed the Man of a Thousand Voices, and Rolling Stone magazine listed him as one of the top 10 greatest SNL cast members of all time. <laughs>